These days, it's hard to ignore the problem of fake news. It's everywhere. Whether it's supposed UFOs flying across the sky or a special restaurant that caters to celebrity cannibals, the problem of fake news continues to degrade our public discourse. One part of fake news is even older than the term itself, creature sightings. Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, the Mothman, Chupacabra, Michele Mbembe, that's a living dinosaur. In our time, Encounters with these mythical creatures have been reported by dozens of witnesses, yet most are exaggerations or outright hoaxes. In Indiana during the 1890s, a creature feature known today as the Crawfordsville Monster became fodder for newspaper headlines. People throughout the town claimed that they saw a horrible apparition in the sky. In a matter of days, the story spread from Crawfordsville to Indianapolis and then even to Brooklyn, New York. While the monster's origins were eventually discovered to be earthly bound, its legendary status still speaks to the power of fake news. The legend begins with a pair of ice mongers, Marshall McIntyre and William Gray, who reportedly saw a mysterious entity in the sky on the morning of September 5th, 1891. As described by the Crawfordsville Journal, it was about 18 feet long and 8 feet wide and moved rapidly through the air by means of several pairs of side fins. It was pure white and had no definite shape or form. There was no tail or head visible, but there was one great flaming eye, and a sort of a wheezing plaintive sound was emitted from a mouth which was invisible. It flapped like a flag in the winds as it came on and frequently gave a great squirm as though suffering unutterable agony. The two men, visibly shaken by what they had seen floating three to four hundred feet in the air, swiftly corralled their horses and left. Now, McIntyre and Gray's experience may have been written off as a tall tale had it not been for the testimony of the Reverend G.W. Switzer, who also reported to have seen the creature. A couple of hours before the Ice Guys encounter, the Methodist pastor reportedly saw something about 16 feet long and eight feet wide, resembling a mass of floating drapery. Enthralled by the creature, he and his wife watched it glide through the sky for a while before they went back to bed. His description of the experience, as quoted in the Crawfordsville Journal, leaves one with a haunted image in the mind, shaped like a fleecy milk-white cloud or like a demon in a shroud. Within two days of the Crawfordsville Journal publishing its first story on the monster, the generally sober and highbrowed Indianapolis Journal published their own telling, which reaffirmed the credibility of Switzer in the eyes of the public. As the journal wrote, the story received unexpected corroboration today from a source that leaves no doubt that some undefinable aerial specter visited the Athens of Indiana. The story then spread across the country. On September 10th, 1891, just five days after the first article in the journal, the Brooklyn Daily Eagle ran its own story. As the story circulated, people's anxieties grew. A woman in St. Louis wrote a frantic letter to the Crawfordsville Journal asking if the entity could be seen at daytime, what color it was, and whether or not it was going west. For the 19th century, this was as close to viral as it gets. Okay, so what exactly was the Crawfordsville monster? The answer was either one of two things. First, it may have been a flock of many hundred killdeer. That's a type of bird. As local investigators John Hornbeck and Abe Hernley reported to the Crawfordsville Journal, the birds were evidently passing over the city and becoming bewildered by the newly installed electric lights and lost their way. Or, if you've ever witnessed a flock of murmurating starlings, you can imagine what that would sound like at night. Another possible explanation for the beast was balloons. Yeah, balloons. The Wichita Daily Eagle noted that boys in Crawfordsville, Indiana have a balloon parachute craze and cats are daily sent up. The parachute being so arranged that it will detach itself from the balloon at a certain time. The cats are not taking too kindly to this aeronautic mania. Now, if I was awakened to the sound of frightened, mewling cats as they flew across the night sky, I'd be just as out of my wits as these folks. Now, what are the lessons here? First, don't launch cats up in balloons. They'll likely get hurt, or at the very least resent you for your choice and take it out on your couch. Second, it's best to follow an age-old adage. Don't apply a supernatural explanation when a perfectly natural explanation will do. These newspapers printed all kinds of speculations about what this monster looked like, even though it was likely a flock of birds or a bunch of balloons with cats. 
And finally, don't be like the woman in St. Louis and be lured in by fake news. Newspapers then and now have constantly fought for our attention, and some of them don't care how they get it. It's important to use common sense and critical thinking to separate fact from fiction, real from fake. In doing so, you'll save yourself the trouble of being swept up in overblown headlines.